Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Sleepover Party. I'm super excited about today's topic. We're going to be talking about boys again, not men. Boys, we're talking about boys today. But for my snack today, I have these chicken and a biscuit. They are Australian snacks and in my most recent YouTube video, I actually rated Aussie snacks. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that. But let's have a little ASMR moment. <laughs> Mm, delicious but yeah you guys make sure to get your snacks get comfy get ready for this little sleepover party i'm super excited but yeah today's topic boys are mean and that they are oh my god i i have countless stories about horrible experiences i've had with guys and just they're so like unhinged and just the shit that they do is just so uncalled for a lot of the time and i just i'm still trying to navigate why that is but I've done a little bit of research. I've gotten some stories from you guys, which I'm excited to tell later, but I thought I was alone in my experiences with these horrible guys. I'm like, why are they coming to me? Why are these things happening to me? And I've kind of realized that it is a universal experience. Boys are just mean. You know, I would love to put myself in the head of a guy for one day and just understand, but you know, as girls, we have to evaluate them from the outside and try to figure out what the hell is going on inside their heads so today we're going to talk about that but yeah mean boys are not to be tolerated at all so we're going to get into how to not deal with their bullshit how to spot an insecure guy <laughs> from a mile away and all of that jazz but yeah but yeah a common theme that i noticed is that boys i'm going to keep on saying boys because these kind of guys they're not men men are strong-willed secure confident people that don't have to bring girls down and don't do disgusting things the people that we are talking about today are boys so i noticed that boys are often mean when they have little crushes on you and it's like why why would they be mean to a girl that they have a crush on like obviously when you have a crush you want to impress you want to get them to like you back so it's just like why are they mean and often it has to do with rejection and men when they are rejected can be really scary and this podcast here isn't to shit on men at all because you know obviously I love men I have a boyfriend <laughs> I have a dad that I love but there's a lot of crazy guys out there and you have to be really careful. But yeah, guys will literally do anything for a girl's attention. And it's sad because 99% of the time, it's not positive attention that they receive. So I actually, I have so many funny stories. Looking back, they're funny. But at the time, I did not find them funny at all. They actually devastated me. But we're going to talk about this guy that had a crush on me when I was in year eight. So I was probably 14. And this was one of my first experiences with a guy actively being super mean to me that liked me and I couldn't understand it. But now looking back, it's, it's freaking crystal clear to me. And this guy still like slides into my DMs to this day, which is super funny. So yeah, this guy liked me and I'm not sitting here and being like, oh, he liked me and I had no proof. No, I knew he liked me because he was trying to like text me. He would ask my friends about me, talk to my friends about me, you know, I think he said he liked me. I don't really know, but I knew that this guy liked me. And unfortunately, I didn't like him back. You know, I wasn't, I was freaking in your eight. I didn't want a boyfriend. Um, and I just didn't like this guy. And that's fine. You don't, you don't, girls, you do not need a reason to reject a guy. You reject a guy because you can and you don't want to be with them. You know, it's as simple as that. Don't let anyone get in your head or try to force you to do anything because if you don't like a guy that is enough like that is all that you have to say and that is acceptable you don't need to give an explanation as to why you're rejecting someone but anyways I didn't like this guy and um he started being really mean really mean and he actually <laughs> threw a pie at me a meat pie at me in the locker bay at school and Everyone was laughing and everyone found it funny. All the boys found it funny. They were all laughing at me like, ha ha ha. He threw a pie at Leah and I was fucking fuming. I'll never forget that day. It really upset me really badly. And it was just so mean. And I'm like, why are you saying you like me? But you're over here throwing a freaking meat pie at my head. 
Thankfully, I don't think the meat pie got on me. It did get on my locker. And then like for the weeks after, he, he had like these nuts and he would throw like nuts at me when I was, it was always in the locker bay. I don't know why. He would always throw like nuts and like little food at me. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is making me hate you 10 times more than I've ever hated you before. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even hate him. I just wasn't interested. But he saw the opportunity and he decided to throw food at me. And I don't know why this is. I, see, I'm a, I'm a girl. I, I cannot answer this because that's something I would never do. He never got in trouble because I didn't dub on him. Um, and all of the guys found him super funny. And it was like a running joke between me and my friends. Like still to this day, like, oh, this guy used to throw pies at me. Like, like what? It's funny, but it's, it's really actually not. And if you're going through a similar situation, um, something that I wish I had done. And this kind of sounded bad because I'm not a snitch, but you should tell... If you're a younger person, you should tell an adult because boys who are at a younger age and are showing signs of doing stuff to disrespect girls, that's not right. That's not normal. And behavior like that, if it's not dealt with at a younger age, it can lead to problems in the future. So I hope that he's learned from his mistakes and he's not doing that or throwing pies at anyone else. You know, at the time, I really didn't have the courage to say anything because I was embarrassed. And I shouldn't be embarrassed. What, like, I didn't have a reason to be embarrassed because there was no reason as to why he was fucking throwing food at me. But I was. It made me embarrassed. And I should have said something, but I didn't. And, you know, when you're a young girl, you don't really know how to stick up to yourself, especially with guys and if you're dealing with guys for the first time. So luckily, it wasn't very sinister. But that's the thing. Boys have to be disciplined because you know, stuff like that can turn into so much more and it's crazy and that's really unfortunate that that's the way things are, but it's the truth. But yeah, if you can sense there's like a common theme that guys who are rejected, they get angry. Therefore, they do things out of spite. So I feel like he was doing that out of being rejected. I honestly don't know. As I said, I'm not in his head. I don't know what's going on in there. But yeah, that was a really crazy experience. And I actually liked this guy, another guy. <laughs> in year eight I had a really big crush on him like I was trying to figure out whether he liked me or not and you know as you do as a freaking 14 year old you ask your friends you're like can you go ask him if he likes me back it's like oh my god like so cringe to think about now but yeah my friends went up to him and they asked him like who do you have a crush on like what do you think about Leah and you know things that people say stick this has stuck in my head throughout my life and multiple other things that guys have said have stuck in my head and it's really sad because it creates real deep rooted insecurities and it's not even things to be insecure about because at the end of the day we're all human we all have little things about us that are human you know and it's really uh, it's actually gross that guys can sit there and say shit because you know, at the end of the day, they're people too and they have their own shit going on. They have their own insecurities and problems. But do you see me going out and saying that to their face? No. But anyways, this guy that I really liked, my friends asked him, they're like, do you like Leah? And he said, I do like her, but I wouldn't do anything or I wouldn't be with her because she has braces and she has nose hair. She has fucking nose hair. I'm going to let that sit for a minute so we can all we can all take that in. How how that would feel for a young 14-year-old girl to hear that from her crush. That day I went home bawling my eyes out. I, I, I was strong throughout the day at school. And then when I got home, I was crying. I have the vision in my head, like looking at myself in the mirror, crying, looking at my, <laughs> at my nose hairs. And I got scissors and I started cutting my nose hairs out. It was like I was it was like a scene from a movie. Like it was crazy. But I like this guy so much that I let what he said about me affect me so deeply. And again, hair is normal. We're human. It's not disgusting. But, you know, maybe I did have some nose hair sticking. <laughs> but that was like the one of the meanest things that anyone's ever said to me. You know, ever since that day, I've been trimming my nose hair. So thanks to him, um, I always have clear nostrils. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Adrian's over there laughing. It's funny because as soon as I got my freaking braces off, 
oh my god, he was up my ass. He wanted to be with me. He had a crush on me. And I never kissed him. I never freaking dated him. Like, nothing happened. Like, he was dirt to me after he said that, you know. It was kind of like a... If you can think that about me, why would I even give you the time of day? Oh, there's this TikTok trend. Canon moment. I think it is. That was like my cannonball moment, whatever it's called. That changed the whole trajectory of my life, which is really sad. I can't sit here and answer like what that stems from. I've noticed that's a that's like a common experience for a lot of girls. Guys will pick on things like that that are natural and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because what they see in the media, um, in movies and all that shit. I don't know what it is because, yeah, it's very prevalent that guys will pick on that stuff and I don't know what the reason is. I don't know if it has to do with freaking OCD, but before we get into my next crazy story, I just want to sit here and say it's not normal. It is not normal to think like that. It is not normal to look at people and to pick apart their features and figure out what's right and what's wrong. That is the worst kind of person that you can associate with. I'm not a freaking doctor. <laughs> I can't answer all the questions, but all I can say is it's wrong. And there are people out there who don't look at you like that. You will find someone that accepts you for who you are. But I was actually with this guy. We were dating. But this guy, he did not let me fart. And he did not let me poop. And he did not believe that girls farted and pooped. That is sick. That is a sick way of thinking because everyone does it. The freaking Kardashians poop and fart. It is the most normal, most human thing that someone can do. And it is literally inevitable. Everyone does it. And if you don't, you're freaking, you're dead. So I don't know what this guy was thinking and what he was trying to prove to me, what he was trying to make me change, because no matter what he told me, I couldn't stop the fact that I was going to do that as a human being. And you know, I hope that now he's grown as a person because that is such a sick and twisted way of thinking. It's so beyond disgusting. And if anyone ever, ever tells you that it is unnatural and that you shouldn't be doing that stuff, get out of that situation because that is abuse um, to be told that you can't fart and to be told that you can't go to the toilet. I, I'm in shock now of, of like just saying that out loud is shocking. And, you know, it's I don't think a lot of guys like that, thank God, but it affected me so deeply and I would be so embarrassed if I accidentally let out a little fart, you know, and he would make me feel so bad for it. And this is a bit TMI, but I would go to his house and my body would like suck everything up and for literally two days, I could not go to the toilet because he had implanted on my mind that I could not go to the toilet. And I would get really sick because of it. I would have really sore stomachs. I would get really bloated. And looking back, I would never do that again. And if you are in a similar situation, it is the least normal thing that you can be a part of. But yeah, that is literally a form of gaslighting. He was gaslighting me into thinking that I wasn't a lady and I wasn't a pretty girl and I wasn't cute if I did these things because no other girls do it. He would say over and over, girls don't fart, girls don't poop. And I started to believe it myself and I, oh my God, I I really hope that he's fixed out that mental problem of his because that is a mental issue um, to think like that about people. You know, you should have a boyfriend or a partner, even if it's a girl, you should have a partner that accepts you, not only for who you are, but as a human being. And, you know, when I met Adrian, I could not fight in front of him for like six months and he was always like why haven't you farted yet and I was like because that's like gross like I don't want to do that like ew like that's embarrassing and he thank god he made me feel like it was okay to be a human and he made me comfortable and then like after six months I was good and now <laughs> I'll do anything in front of Adrian but you will find someone that makes you comfortable as a human being it's sick to think that way it's literally psychotic psychotic but yeah guys do these things for multiple reasons and we're going to talk about 
why they do horrible things like this and how to spot it from a mile away and how to remove yourself from the situation. It's really important to not associate your worth with what a guy says your worth is because they don't know shit. So yeah, that's why it's really important to make sure to tell guys when they are in the wrong because, you know, sometimes you'll tell them and they won't believe you. Like it just goes in one ear and out the other. So you can tell them, but you can also surround yourself with the right kind of guys, the right kind of men. And boys will be boys, but you will know when you found yourself a man because there is a very clear difference. So yeah, here's the kind of things to look for. Why guys that like you make you insecure. And one of the reasons is control. A lot of the times it's the guys who are insecure themselves and they want to place themselves in a position above you and make you insecure. So you feel like you're below the guy and you can't leave the situation and that they are better than you. You can't get better. That's something I've heard way too many times before. You'll never find anyone better than me. You know, there's a bajillion million fish in the sea. That's why you pick someone because you love them, because they're the right fit for you, not because there's better options. But then again, if someone's a fucking asshole, there are other fish in the sea. But yeah, making you insecure is kind of assuring their spot above you. And another reason is that you are too good for them and they are insecure. And sometimes like they don't do it purposefully. It can just come from insecurity. I think there's definitely a difference between doing things out of being insecure and doing things out of being insecure and to control. But men who are insecure and feel like they've got a hot, a hot girl and they feel like they ain't shit and they can't do better. They will often try to make you feel insecure and bad about yourselves, which is so sad. And, you know, girls can be really naive. And I can say that if you're younger and you're listening to this, really resonate with what I'm saying and listen to me. Please listen to me because, you know, you don't need to put up with anything. If a guy is projecting his insecurities onto you, he's not a positive person. And, you know, you can be there for them and you can assure them, you know, if they're not doing it purposefully, if they are just honestly feeling insecure, because being insecure is not the issue. It's pulling you down with them. So I think it's also really important to uplift your boyfriend or your partner or your crush if he is feeling insecure, because no one has anything to be insecure about. You know, we're all people. Similar to control power, to gain power in the relationship, kind of to get you to do whatever they say, you know, the longer it goes on the worse it's going to get. Another reason why they may be making you insecure is because they want more attention. Yeah, everyone makes mistakes, um, but it's good to recognize whether or not someone can change. And oh, it's hard. It's a really hard topic. And it's a really kind of sad topic because all of my friends, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but I can say for myself and every other girl that I know, everyone's dealt with a shitty guy. And, you know, I think every guy can be a shitty guy. And that's why it's so important to tell guys when they are wrong so they can mature from guys into men. So yeah, if you're dealing with a man who is being mean to you, who is projecting their insecurities onto you, who is tearing you down, this is how to escape the situation. As I said before, you can talk with them about it because as I said, being insecure is normal and sometimes people don't realize that they're tearing you down with them as well. So it's super important to talk about it and it's really hard for someone to admit that they are in the wrong and they are being insecure. That is one of the hardest things you can do is to admit, hey, I am feeling insecure about this because no one wants to say that. Everyone wants to look like they're the most self-secure person. So I think if you have a guy and you can sit with them and be like, hey, why are you acting like this? You know, you're making me feel really bad and you shouldn't be tearing me down. I'm obviously with you for a reason. And yet people obviously take time to change and to improve their behaviors because yeah some of these actions can stem from insecurities throughout childhood and you know this isn't just going for men women can do this too women can tear down their partners with them as well you know it's a very equal thing I'm just saying from my experience boys are mean you know and yeah obviously if the situation is extreme or it doesn't look like it's going to improve remove yourself from the situation and removing yourself from relationships is the hardest thing ever. Something I see a lot, girls check out of the relationship mentally before they actually leave the relationship. But even when you're checked out mentally, it's actually really hard to leave someone and things do get better 
And I know it's it's literally impossible to look at a situation when you're in it and be like, if I leave this, it will get better. But I promise you, things do get better. But yeah, this insecure man or woman is not your issue in the first place. It's not your problem. Their insecurities have nothing to do with you. And, you know, in relationships, for me personally, I look at my partner like they're freaking perfect, like they're beautiful, blah, 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 blah. Like I don't look at my partner and be like, ew, he has a hair out of place. You know what I'm saying? It's actually wild that when you have a partner and you're supposedly in love with them, you can look at them and be like, ew, they're freaking disgusting. You know, if you're looking at some, if you yourself are looking at someone that you're with and thinking that they are disgusting, you don't actually like that person. And if you're on the other end of that, realize that they don't actually like you. And it's hard because they'll tell you that they like you. But if they're saying this stuff about you, it's the hard truth. And they don't deserve you. If they can see that, they don't deserve you because you are not that. You are not what they see. You are perfect. And yeah, whatever I'm saying today, moral of the story is whatever it is, do not excuse this behavior. It is not normal. You don't need to surround yourself with these people with bad energies that freaking make you feel shit about yourself. But, you know, it's inevitable. I can say for every one of my friends and for myself, (laughs) everyone's experienced a guy being mean to them. It's something you deal with growing up and it's something that men seem to do growing up. I don't know why the fuck. (laughs) Rejection is hard and obviously guys get rejected a lot more than girls. And I think if you're a guy and you're watching this, learn to take rejection not so hard because if a girl's rejecting you there's always another girl and girls if there's a guy rejecting you there's 100 other guys you know what i'm saying it's not that deep there's someone for everyone and even if you feel alone for many many years of your life it will come don't be desperate because it will happen it is a part of life and you know i'm talking about the more crazy side of things a lot of the time it's not that deep and guys just say mean things because they feel like they can get away with it. But I asked you guys on my little story on my sleepover party account to send me some mean things that guys have said to you and we're going to discuss them. I think majority of girls go through this, which is, it sucks. It's really sad and it's really mean and we shouldn't have to go through that. So let's deep dive, deep dive into what the hell these men are saying. Okay. Someone said, he was into me in private, he would text me, but in front of the school, he bullied me. Same situation as me, girl. What the hell? Why? I don't know. Maybe it's so they can keep their options open and have multiple crushes, but it's it's like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe it's like the adrenaline that keeps on pulling us back. It's like, but he says he likes me, but then he's mean. It's like, ugh. Okay, the next one is... He pulled my mailbox out of the ground and threw it down my driveway. Girl, that is psychotic. That is insane. Um, I don't even know what to say about that. That is rage, pure rage. That is also like a really random thing. Like why the mailbox? Like why your mailbox? Like couldn't he just, you know, do something else? Like why did he have to rip out a freaking mailbox? That's a little bit extreme. I wouldn't pay for my ex's McDonald's. So he drove off and left me stranded at 4 a.m. in the rain. I hope you left him because that is, again, psychotic. A lot of these things are really concerning. He made fun of my body hair. Mm. Seems to be a common theme. I don't know what it is. Like, I I don't want to talk for him, but I don't think Adrian cares about body hair. You know, I, I get laser, but, you know, sometimes if you don't get laser for a while, shit starts to grow back. You know, everyone gets body hair. It's literally human nature. And... You know, oftentimes guys will be hairy and then they'll be like, you can't be hairy. It's like, why do you think that way? I think it has, it ties a lot into like being hygienic, Um, but you can have hair and still be clean. At the end of the day, it is down to preference, but also it's, it's not the worst thing in the world to have some hair. Okay, the next one is he called, oh my God. He called me the meanest names such as Ratatouille, Shrek, fat and ugly. That is so mean. It's also kind of funny, but (laughs) don't tolerate it, girl. Leave that freaking situation. He told me to go live in the ocean with the other whales. See what I mean? Like shit sticks. Shit sticks in your brain. Like this girl has definitely remembered word for word what this guy said to her. Oh, he pretended to have cancer so I would have sex with him. I don't know what it is about people lying about having cancer. I don't know what kind of sympathy And I don't know what people think they're going to receive because, you know, everyone's going to find out that you don't have freaking cancer 
why are you lying about having cancer? He told me my eyes are like pools of shit and my hair is like flowing sewer water. Hmm. Where, did, where does this come from? Like, what is the narrative in their brain? He asked me to use my number for Tinder after we broke up. Oh my god, that's kind of evil. That's actually really mean. Hopefully, you guys are younger and these are just dumbass boys that are navigating their way through life. But again, there's no excuse to be, like, to be that way, to speak that way, to treat others that way. I don't know what their parents freaking taught them. But, you know, if I ever have a son, best believe he will be taught the hard way how to be nice to freaking women. Because everyone should be nice to women. And women should be nice to men. Anyways, let's play spin the bottle. I'm going to read out the options. We have, what would you rather? Spill the tea. Never have I ever. Prank call. Ask me anything. Truth or dare. Kiss, marry, kill. An embarrassing story. Okay, let's spin. Okay. Spill the tea? Spill the tea. What's your worst slash craziest experience with a guy? I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, but one sticks out in my mind. I'd actually never experienced the ick before I met this guy. And you know, whilst we were talking, weird things would happen. Like I would get comments on my, you know, social media, like, hey, like we know you're dating this guy, like he's this blah, 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 like they describe him. And no one knew. I wasn't even like seeing him. And also he like asked me to be his girlfriend probably like three times. And each time I'd be like, you know, no, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. Uh, and it was just like really uncomfy. And like slowly, slowly I started seeing him less and less. Uh, and then it got to a point where, you know, I wasn't seeing him at all. And like, I kind of stopped talking to him, but he was on my case. Like he was really trying to talk to me. He was trying to call me. He was being like, why aren't you talking to me? It was really uncomfortable for me but yeah anyways a couple months went by and this freaking instagram page pops up and it's like me and this guy's name I'm like what the fuck is this and it's like messaging me and it's like hey we know you dated this guy and like we know about your secret relationship and i'm like bro number one we didn't date number two it wasn't anything number three no one knew so there's something very fishy about this situation. I do some digging. Here's a little hack for you guys. If, if there's a little fake account on Instagram and you want to figure out who it is, just do forget my password, the two-factor authentication thing, and you can see the little parts of the email and the little parts of the number. And what I did, there was like a, for example, like a freaking seven, eight at the end of the number. I don't know. And I typed it in my contacts and guess who else's number ended in a seven, eight. The guy, this guy that was obsessive and crazy and would not leave me alone. And then like months and months and months and months later, maybe even like a year later, he messaged Adrian on his little fake account, which we both knew was him. But that was kind of scary. That was kind of really creepy. That was really, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's giving like Joe Goldberg vibes in a really creepy way. Adrian just said Jeffrey Dahmer vibes. I don't think it's that deep, but yeah creep vibe but i hope you guys enjoyed this little podcast episode about how boys are mean and you just gotta surround yourself with the right people and you know good things will happen so you know sometimes it's not that deep sometimes it can turn into more sinister and abusive things and it's really important to recognize when something harmless can turn into something harmful so Always look out for yourself and always look out for your friends. But yeah, I love you guys so much. But I'm going to go to sleep and I hope you enjoyed this sleepover party. Good night.